Hello, students. Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here. Welcome to today's Fan of the Opera, Learn How to Play Music of the Night. So uh, this is going to be a great class if you, if you have interest in learning the song. And we're going to be going through teaching you guys the version that I have, which is available at musicnotes.com. Uh, you actually don't have to buy the sheet music as I'm just going to teach you guys the first page of what's sort of the sample page. There's just a little bit that you just sort of have to add in at the very end uh, without buying it, but I'll sort of teach you guys how to do that. And we actually have three students that are willing to play uh, the song, and I can give some tips based on that. So yeah, the benefit of Zoom, which is what we're on right now, is just the interactiveness. So I can give you guys sort of an explanation, but then where it really benefits is you guys play a little bit for me, and I can sort of, you know, just based on seeing you, can give tips, just like a private lesson. So normally what you pay, you know, 30 bucks a lesson, 25 a lesson um, for a private teacher, you know, you guys can get that with using this platform, using Zoom. So I hope you guys decide to sort of uh, check it out in the future and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So um, the song, I'm just gonna sort of play it a little bit. So it goes like this. Technically, all of that can be played in first position. So uh, for those of you guys that have never played outside of first position, um, that's basically this. Uh, we're eventually going to shift into third for the next part. So technically, if you're more of a beginner, um, the first line is going to be more uh, maybe suited for, for your ability level. So the biggest thing is when playing a song like this is, you know, we want to have really smooth bows going on. So it's very easy for students to sort of um, only move the bow a certain speed and then sort of stop and then sort of start up again. So we want the sort of constant motion of the bow going and uh, it's very easy to sort of uh, make the bow stop when you're say changing finger spots. Um, one thing that you can add in this piece is the double stop which is technically the third note. So instead of just playing F sharp, instead of going I'm sorry, instead of just playing A you can also add second finger high on the D string, which is F sharp. So it creates a double stop, which sounds like this. Like that. So if you guys have never done double stops before, um, it might be a little bit tricky. The biggest thing is understanding that the, the bow hair has to touch both strings at the same time. And try not to let this, the bow hair lean more on one string or the other. The, the key is to have it be the same sort of contact on both strings, which is not easy. So if you've never done double stops, you might just want to work more on open string double stops to sort of work on the contact. Um, technically, with this double stop, you're playing second finger on the D string along with an open A. What you need to really focus on is not hitting that A string as you're playing the, the second finger on the D string. So um, what, well, basically what that is, it's called tunneling. So tunneling is basically where um, you know, our finger has to really avoid hitting that A string. Otherwise, if it just barely nicks it, it's gonna create a really, really ugly sound. Okay, so instead of you placing your second finger more on right on top of the string, we wanna lean it more towards the G string. See that? Okay, and if we do that, now our A is more open. But now if it was closer, if I had it more on top, now I could hit it. See how I'm hitting it? That makes a really bad noise. So. So yeah, uh, that's a really cool double stop to add in this piece. Technically it could also be here. And that's actually what's written in the music, by the way. So very good. Well, let's go ahead and just get going with uh, the interactive part of this uh, app, which is what makes it so awesome. Uh, Meg Puckett, do you want to just quick introduce yourself and uh, maybe play the first little little bit there for us and I can give you some tips. Hi, I'm from Maine. I've been playing about seven and a half years and I also play the viola and I play violin in two orchestras. I like second violin because it's harmony parts. Very good. You've been to a lot of classes and um, I assume mm -hmm. have been getting, getting a lot out of them. Definitely, yeah. I've had bad habits that I'm learning to correct now. A little late, but... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and I'm working on the dreaded vibrato. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, we'll have to go through that. So, cool. You want to play the first uh, line there? Maybe, are you going to try it with a double stop? Yeah, I'll try it. Okay. 
Can you see me? Yeah. Good intonation, um, good bow speed. I mean, you're definitely not stopping the bow. That's great. Good double stop, good good angle of the bow. Everything is really good there. Um, technically, yeah, I mean, it's funny you mentioned vibrato because like some of those notes would even pop out even more with some vibrato. Yeah. Um, I technically played it with some of those, like the, um, the D right after the double stop is a good one. Um, so like right here. So really nothing wrong with what you just did, just adding vibrato would just sort of be icing on the cake. So very good. Thank you. Great. Um, Amy, uh, you want to quick introduce yourself and maybe just, yeah, play for us a little bit? I'm trying to unmute. There you go. Okay, there you go. Um, my name is Amy. I've, not, I've only been playing about a year. And I'm just really enjoying the chance to get to learn. And Amy, you're in, in, in uh, or you were in our Tuesday night uh, Suzuki classes, right? Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. That'd be cool. So, all right, yeah, go ahead and uh, play for us. Yeah, the first line there. Okay. I had it pulled up on my computer and I lost it. Oh, well. let's <laughs> see. And where are you from, Amy? Um, Charlotte, North Carolina, not far from Charlotte, North Carolina. Far enough to be away from all the news stuff, though. Oh, yeah. I was, yeah, obviously mentioning that word. It's like all over the news, right? Oh, well, we've got a lot of people here that are just outright working from home and not even going into work. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Let's see. All right, little computer. Aha, there it is. Yay. Are you going to do it with the double stop? No, I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet. That's all right. No. No problem. You, that's actually actually a good point because yeah, if you've been playing sort of under three years, I would say do not do the double stop. Um, so yeah, perfect. good in tune good to see natural a um, couple of I would say slur um, maybe more of some of those notes um, but not a huge deal um, you could like for example I would do two, two note slurs more often uh, like right here like that instead of but not a huge deal um, good in tune is the next part harder <laughs> well, I cheat. I, I just pull it, pop it over to the E string. Okay. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of expecting um, students to sort of struggle a little bit with changing strings and getting it clean. So for those of you guys who are struggling with that, try to really make sure you're changing um, bow planes with your elbow. You know, so when you're playing this, see I'm doing that. So try not to do at the same time where you're moving and changing the elbow. Try to do that first and then move the bow, extend your arm, bend the wrist. It's gonna create sort of a clean transition sound. If you're getting any sort of bow bounce, that's because of that, so. Great, thanks, Amy. Uh, let's go to the next student that um, decided she's gonna play for us. Jasmine, how you doing? Let me unmute you a second. Yeah. By the way, yeah, I'm gonna, by the way, Amy, real quick, I'm gonna ask students to play the next part. I can't imagine the next part would be that hard for you how, for how you just did that. So if you want to just try it a second, then I'll give you some tips on that. Okay. Uh, should I introduce myself? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. My name is Jasmine and I live in Bristol, Virginia, and I've been playing for about seven years. 
And um, yes, I'm going to try the double stop with this because I've worked on some double stops. So I'm going to try that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Technically, going to go over that part in just a second as far as how I would finger it. Because uh, I'm going to suggest shifting in that part, actually. What's that? I'm actually going to suggest that we shift in that part. So I'll, I'll go over that in just a minute. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, just the first line of that. Really good job, Jasmine. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, so um, it's a couple things. I mean, because it sounded really good in tune. I would watch that C natural just a little bit lower with that low two. Um, technically, we have some high twos, like with the F sharp uh, tunnel but uh -huh. just a little bit lower with the C natural low too. Okay. Um, and then also just a, just a small thing, um, as you're doing the double stop, try to pay attention to the bow speed. You're just slightly um, making the bow just a little bit slower as you're thinking about left hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, if yeah. you do that more sort of the same speed, it'll be just a little bit smoother, but it's really good. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> good. I think it's because of all the mess up too, so I just got a little nervous on it. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That happens a lot. Um, we work on this a lot with our like our vibrato class on Wednesday nights. Um, you know, as we're doing this motion of vibrato, it's very easy to not even think about the right hand. You know, it's like. Yeah. Um, but technically, a lot of times, maybe we're not getting the sound we want with vibrato because we're not even thinking at all about the right hand. So, yeah, good, yeah. really nice job. Yeah, you guys play so well. I mean, I got to get some some people playing that sort of make a bunch of mistakes. You know, so I got some <laughs> stuff to talk about, right? <laughs> Yeah, good job, very good. All right, let me talk about the next section, um, which is technically the part you started there, Jasmine. And um, technically what I would do, and it says it actually in the music that I have in front of me, is shift into third position. So instead of playing it like that, I would actually suggest shifting into the third position. So the first note would be E, second finger on the A string in third, like this. So two, four. When you shift, make sure the thumb comes along for the ride as you're gonna eventually go down to first position. So we wanna make sure our thumb and our fingers are sort of coming together. So yeah, uh, first finger is lined up with the thumb, second finger is the one we're gonna be hitting first, that E. And then four, so. And then the next one part is actually sort of the hard part, and I think this is gonna give you guys the most trouble is playing first finger both on the A string and the E string at the same time. That's a double stop. Um, it's technically a D with an A. So I'm placing my finger on both strings. And what's key with this concept is making sure that you guys have your finger uh, down with contact on both strings evenly. Try when you're doing double stops uh, like this to not actually separate the string. You guys see how I'm separating the string? Uh, that's going to make it to where you don't have the proper contact down. So what I sort of do is I sort of bring the strings a little bit together and never separate them because that's going to cause it to not be as clean. So we're going for this sound. Like that. I don't know how good that sounds on Zoom, by the way. Um, double stops and E string don't always sound great on video platforms. But um, technically, the concept is placing and getting good contact um, onto the fingerboard. It doesn't take a lot of force, like a lot of, you know, this extreme pressure. It's more just, you know, proper contact, efficient contact. Good, all right. Um, I see David just came in. Hey, David, <laughs> how you doing? I bet you're an excited man with your new violin. So thanks for coming. You wanna say hello real quick? Say, uh, let people know who you are and where you're from. Hey, right on, yeah. Yeah, yeah good afternoon. Yeah, Dave DeHaan, uh, London, Ontario. And uh, just uh, tune, tune it in to see how uh, your class is going here. Very good. We're, uh, we're just sort of in the middle of going over uh, music of the night. Yep, excellent. Carry on. Great. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, the, the uh, music of the night, the second part there, we're going to be shifting the third. Meg, do you want to go ahead and try that for us? And, uh, yeah, okay. if you want to do the double stop, it's probably going to be the hardest double stop of the piece, I think. Okay. <laughs> Good. 
good. Very nice. I, so, went into yeah. second. I, I went into second on the last one. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, because the double stop changes. Yeah, um, fingering wise, I like to do everything up until. So. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, I like to shift down actually right before uh, the part you just played. So. Mm -hmm. Like that. So shift down on the last part of that, the third line, technically. Of well, the you, double line. Yeah, how did you play the double stop then? I, I still played it in third. And then I went over to the A string for the, for the G, four, what? two, and then shifted the B. You can't play it in third. It's not the same note. Uh, I see. Um, I just played it the same double stop as before. So oh, I, was okay. just I was playing it the way it was written, so that's why I went down into second. I see. Yeah, technically, um, I would just do it 1-1, one, one, just like before. Yeah, that's the way I played it in the recording uh, as well. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that would, be, that would make it a little trickier for people, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I could, we could technically do it that way. In a second, yeah. Okay, good. So um, a couple of suggestions for you, Meg. Um, so just as you're um, in third, I just noticed a couple of F sharps are a little bit flat. So just a little tighter with the three to the four. A little tighter there. Um, try to just really fingers on the very edge of the string. That's going to help sort of hit that half step. A lot of times students, when they put a four down in third position, they sort of hog the string too much. And then it's sort of harder to get that tucked in half step. So um, yeah, try to aim fingers on the very edge. That'll make it sort of more comfortable. Also to do vibrato. So if your fingers hog the string, it makes it harder to do third, third position vibrato. So. So some of you guys might be struggling to do uh, third position vibrato um, compared to first position vibrato. And a lot of that is because you guys maybe are pressing too hard in third position because it might be sort of a, a foreign position. So there's more uh, sort of effort or, you know, you guys feel like you need more um, grab on the instrument, which is technically not true. Uh, it's the same thing as in first position. So good. Awesome. Very, thanks. Thanks so much, Meg. Uh, that would be my biggest tip. Everything else was really good. Uh, Amy, go ahead. Do you want to try it? Can you do third position yet? It's still really new. It's easy for me to pop it over onto the E string. Okay, technically we can do this in first position. It would be um, this. You want to try that? We worked on this a little bit in our classes. Um, so you do just a wonderful job with intonation. No problems there at all. Um, just technically when you're on the E string, um, more of this, right? Fingers squeeze back. Um, so technically, if you guys want to actually try this out there that are watching, try playing your fourth finger on the G string and, and first finger on the E string at the same time. If you can do that, your knuckles are up high enough um, and your hand is close, um, close enough to the instrument. So yeah, it's very easy, Amy, to be sort of far, farther away over here while playing on the E. We want to be closer. Um, technically, it's not going to affect maybe this piece in particular, but it could affect playing really fast uh, with other pieces later. But intonation was great. Good job. Thanks. Jasmine, do you want to quick uh, play this next part? Are you able to do it in third? That's OK. Let me um, unmute. And by the way, I'm going to uh, ask everybody if they have questions right after this. So feel free to prepare a question. Uh, you can chat me a question or raise your hand. So I'm going to quick uh, unmute Jasmine. Go ahead, Jasmine. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure how to do that in the first position. I, I see it as easier in the first position. 
Sure. And I wondered, yeah. what is the difference? Why would you want to do it in the third position? Sure. Well, um, the reason is because the reason why we do third position is that it helps us avoid um, string crossings and also helps us to be in a position to vibrato more. So anytime we have an open string, it technically only sounds open, right? Eh, instead of, you know, playing that really nice uh, vibrato. So, you know, what sounds better to you, this? Or... So that's the reason for it. Uh, technically, you could play it fourth finger, but then look at all the string crossings. Yeah. Okay, I see that. So, where? How would you position your fingers for this? Um, how would you start it? Yeah. So, technically, the um, do you see the music in front of you right now? Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. do you see where it actually gives you a, a number two above the note? Yeah. That's technically a, a violin fingering. So instead of playing that as a four or as an open E, uh -huh. you're suggesting that you place your second finger where the four is. All the way down there. Yep. Third position. Okay. So this the is e the pitch. This is what the second, this is what it will sound like in third, the first note. It will technically be the same pitch as your open E. Yep, and then you do two, four, 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 and then you do one, one on the EA. Okay, now how? Yep, and then first finger. Yeah, that's gonna be tough, that's the hardest part. Yeah. Um, you might not wanna do a double stop, you might just wanna do it on um, like this. Like that. Okay. Oh, your first finger's on the E string for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't know where that was. Okay. And so if your first finger is on the E, then how would you do that C note, uh, the D note? Um, Let's see. I don't see any Ds. Phrase? Do you mean uh, the note? Do you mean the note right after the double? Technically, the double stop. With the double stop. The G would be fourth finger on the um, A string right after that, so it'd be right back to the four. Like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it'd be then first finger on the E string. Yep, now back to the A string, fourth finger. Yep, back to four. Yep, ugly. Okay. Yeah, so it looks this would be great practice for you to work on shifting. Yeah, really, really. Okay, great. I'll have to practice on that. <laughs> Very good. All right, we have a, a raised hand. Uh, Matt, go ahead. I'm thinking that if you came up to the D just before you went into third, or you come up to the D after the double stop? Just okay, I'm sorry, you're just you're make, making a fingering suggestion? Yeah, go, go to the D with a one, because that puts you in third position. You could do that too, yep, so you go. Right. Yep, yep. That's fine. It's That'd easier fine. to find. It's hard to find that. I have trouble finding the E as a two without yeah. some relation to the one being. Yeah. 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 Technically, um, Meg, if you're struggling with that, that would be really good practice for you because, yeah, there's going to be situations uh, in some music where doing the two is going to be necessary. Uh, in this position, it's not technically with what you're saying. But, um, but yeah, really good practice is going from first to third with the two. Like. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just guided by the thumb and the index sort of bringing this up and just placing the two down. It just gives you a relationship of where you should be for when you start yep. practicing. Good. Yeah.
Yeah, a really good book, Jasmine, I would highly recommend is um, Introduction to the Physicians, Volume 1 by um, uh, Henry, uh, Henry Wrinkler. Uh, that's what I use for my students. And it's literally just doing different exercises from first to third positions. Yeah. And it uh, covers different key signatures, stuff like that. So yeah, um, every violinist sort of has to go through that transition into learning new positions. I think that's be a good, good book for you. Well, send me that link to it so that I can order it or something. Okay, yeah, I'll send it right after the class here. Okay, great, great. awesome. Great. Yeah, I've got to um, practice that. <laughs> yeah, so technically um, we're almost done with the class here, but I wanted just to sort of conclude the last bit and show you guys sort of what you do at the end of it. So we have... Um, So that's going to be back to first position. Now this next part, you just sort of have to know by heart if you don't actually get the music. Um, it's going to be starting on B. So it's basically. Like that. So you guys, this will be recorded. You guys will be able to sort of follow that part. So, yeah. And uh, so basically, um, this is the, the free class of the, um, the music of the night. So if you guys are interested in sort of more tips on it, if you feel like you need help with third position, um, if you feel like you need help with sort of the musicality of it, the vibrato of it, uh, I'm actually going to do the class next Saturday, same time. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, this is a $10 class. And uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll definitely give you guys some great tips. Uh, anybody that's technically didn't come this week can come in next week. I'll be posting this um, on social media. So we might get some people coming in. So yeah, Jasmine, if you wanted uh, to do that, definitely I think it'd be great for you. Um, but other students that are sort of just starting their position, um, that are interested in vibrato, sort of how to do things musical with vibrato, there's definitely more I can talk about, so. Yeah. Cool. All right, any other questions um before we wrap it up and then yeah you guys can go watch some football <laughs> yeah really <laughs> cool um so yeah just to let you guys know i'm doing a class to not sorry not a class a uh, free giveaway tonight at 9 30 uh so all you guys that are here right now can come to that and it's gonna be just be giving away some prizes um, just a customer appreciation. So just really appreciate you guys um, following me and we really look forward to um, seeing you guys tonight. So 9.30 p.m. It will be in the, um, the general room that we normally use for classes. So um, the ID is, um, let me quick give it to you guys. So you download Zoom on your phone, it's really easy. And you just put this ID in, it's um, 503-666-8673. Uh, so all you do, you put it right in your phone and you come right into here and it's really easy. So for those of you guys that are watching right now, um, that still are before Saturday at 930, you can come in. Also, um, I invite anybody to come in um, throughout the week at 10 a.m., uh, 8 p.m. and 1030 p.m. Um, sorry, 1130 p.m. And uh, that's just like hangouts. So you guys can just come in and get to know their students and ask questions, and stuff like that. So actually, Amy and Meg have been in a lot of those. Um, so, uh, but yeah, the, the family's here, they're all uh, hanging out, so I should probably get going. <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead, Amy. Or was that you? Sorry, was that Jasmine? No, I said bye. Enjoy your okay. family. Good, good seeing you, Jasmine. Good to see good you too. You. Yeah. You. And send me that link on the uh, first and third position, on the third position. Okay, I'll send that. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, sounds you. great. All right. Hope to see you guys now. soon. All right. Bye bye. Thanks. Uh, I gotta figure out so. Uh, by the way, you guys can go in the in the um, just hangout room. Uh, I won't be there, but you guys can do that. I'll I'll start that room right now. <laughs>